Capney, attention! I am Career Ship Sergeant Zim, your company commander. When you speak to me, you will salute and say, Sir! You will salute and sir anyone who carries an instructor's baton. Who sneezed? Who sneezed? I did, a voice answered. I did what? I sneezed. I sneezed, sir. I sneezed, sir. I'm cold, sir. Oh, ho. Zim strode up to the man who had sneezed, shoved the ferrule of the swagger cane an inch under his nose and demanded, Name? Jenkins, sir. Jenkins. Zim repeated as if the word were somehow distasteful, even shameful. I suppose some night on patrol you're going to sneeze just because you got a runny nose, eh? I hope not, sir. So do I. But you're cold. Hmm. We'll fix that. He pointed with his stick. See that armory over there? I looked and could see nothing but prairie except for one building that seemed to be almost on the skyline. Fall out! Run around it! Run, I said! Fast! Bronski! Pace him! Right, Sarge. A little further down the page. You sunken-chested, slack-bellied, drooling refugees from apron strings. In my whole life I never saw such a disgraceful huddle of mama's spoiled little darlings in. You there, suck up that gut. Eyes front, I'm talking to you. This is from page 44 and 45 of Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein, 1949. Mia culpa. I was wrong. Fourteen months ago, I reviewed Starship Troopers. It was close to the beginning of this channel. I had just returned to reading SF. I compared Starship Troopers to The Forever War by Joe Haldeman and Old Man's War by John Scalzi. Let's take a look at my final rating. Starship Troopers by Robert A. Heinlein, 1959. This military SF novel deals with an interstellar war with the Arachnids, whom the soldiers call the Bugs. We follow Johnny Rico as he is recruited, trained, and fights. Great military scenes. Reads like a World War II story. The long ideological or philosophical passages turn me off. For me, 6 out of 10. Third place. What happened? 14 months later, I realize that this was an egregious mistake. I've read a lot of science fiction and read a lot about science fiction in those 14 months. I've learned to understand context and to do a little research about the book itself. My biggest problem was that I came into this book with a preconceived notion. A preconceived notion from watching the 1997 movie Starship Troopers. Paul Verhoeven's movie itself is a bit of a controversial one, but having seen it, I came into the novel expecting a lot of military action, amazing scenes of power suits being explored for the first time in SF. This was a big mistake. The first chapter furthered this perception for me. It is an amazing battle scene on a planet. But following that chapter, we don't see another battle scene until chapter 10. And that is for maybe about half the chapter. And following that chapter, we don't see any more battles until almost the end of the book. So what dominates the narrative of Starship Troopers? High school classes with a Mr. Dubois. Boot camp. Training. Philosophical questions. And debates about citizenship, service, and governance. 14 months ago, I thought, what is going on here? Where are all the battle scenes and war stories? But really, war is about 90% preparation and only 5-10% to of battles. As I started to learn more about Robert A. Heinlein, I started to get some context for this book, and I started to see it in a different light. The following quotes are from Wikipedia. Look for Robert A. Heinlein or Starship Troopers. 
Robert Heinlein was among the best-selling science fiction authors of the 1940s and 1950s, along with Isaac Asimov and Arthur C. Clarke. They were known as the big three that dominated U.S. science fiction. In contrast to the others, Heinlein firmly endorsed the anti-communist sentiment of the Cold War era in his writing. Heinlein served in the U.S. Navy for five years after graduating from the United States Naval Academy in 1929. His experience in the military profoundly influenced his fiction. When Heinlein returned to writing after World War II, he sought to diversify beyond the pulps. In 1946, Heinlein told his agent that his own propaganda purposes will be best served by writing a series of boys' books. This would simultaneously broaden the audience for science fiction and also put Heinlein into a steady, lucrative market. The Heinlein Juveniles are the science fiction novels written by Robert A. Heinlein for Scribner's Young Adult Line. Scribner's published the first 12 between 1947 and 1958, but rejected the 13th, Starship Troopers. That one was instead published by Putnam. At some point between 1958 and 1959, Heinlein put aside the novel that would become Stranger in a Strange Land and wrote Starship Troopers. His motivation arose partially from his anger at U.S. President Dwight Eisenhower's decision to suspend U.S. nuclear tests and the Soviet tests that occurred soon afterward. Writing in his 1980 volume Expanded Universe, Heinlein would say that the publication of a newspaper advertisement placed by the National Committee for a Sane Nuclear Policy on April 5, 1958, calling for a unilateral suspension of nuclear weapons testing by the United States, sparked his desire to write Starship Troopers. Like many of Heinlein's books, Starship Troopers was completed in a few weeks. It was originally written as a juvenile novel for the New York publishing house Scribner. The manuscript was rejected, prompting Heinlein to end his association with the publisher completely and resume writing books with adult themes. Scholars have suggested that Scribner's rejection was based on ideological objections to the content of the novel, particularly its treatment of military conflict. Heinlein told his agent, I feel that I was treated in a very shabby fashion, and I regard him, that's Mr. Scribner, as in part responsible and do not wish to place any more stories with his firm. The magazine of fantasy and science fiction first published Starship Troopers in October and November 1959 as a two-part serial titled Starship Soldier. A senior editor at Putnam's, Peter Israel, purchased the manuscript and approved revisions that made it more marketable to adults. So the audience for Starship Troopers was originally juveniles and young adults. What would a veteran tell them about war? It's no wonder that we have scenes in high school and an influential teacher who comes from the military, Mr. Dubois, debating philosophical questions with his students. We have long passages about boot camp and training and becoming an adult. And for Heinlein, becoming an adult is also coming to terms with the reality of the world. He examines this reality by posing the question, should service, military service, be required to be able to vote in the society? If you're interested in this topic of service and citizenship, one of my friend's Grammaticus books has a number of great videos about Starship Troopers. I'm going to put a link to his channel and to a video in the description for this video and also pin a comment. The video that deals with it in depth, taking a look at quotes directly from the book, is entitled, The Starship Troopers Voting Controversy Solved? Question mark, question mark, question mark. So, having read the book twice, I can tell you it is very different than the movie Starship Troopers by Paul Verhoeven in 1997. This is really a coming of age novel in a time of war, something that the whole world had gone through 15 years earlier. There are some hard fought lessons from veterans of that war. That means it's not a novel of battle scenes and strategy. It's a novel about becoming an adult, about facing realities of the world and crafting some interesting sociological solutions to those problems. Now you may agree or disagree. There's lots to debate in this book. But that's the beauty of Starship Troopers. It's relevant and debatable still today. I gained a much greater appreciation reading this book the second time round, knowing what I was getting myself into. This is an influential book beyond science fiction. 
I give it 9 out of 10. Highly recommended. So have you any thoughts about Starship Troopers you'd like to share in the comments? Or perhaps there's books that you've had to reconsider. I've called a number of my second reading of books upon further review, and this will be in that playlist as well. Until next time, keep an open mind and keep reading.